Hi, in the following video we're going to create this program that's going to demonstrate a list box. You can see that I'm going to create a form that will allow you to add a name to your friends list and then we will be able to sort the list either in ascending order or descending order. So that's what's coming up next. So here's the program in action. You can see I can add five names to a list and I can also add them one at a time. So if I want to add Bob and choose add, I now have six. If I choose sort from A to Z, you can see that Aaron is first, Bob, and then Vicky is last. If I choose Z to A, we have the reverse order. And if I choose clear, we can add a new list again. So that's what we're about to program now. So let's take a look at what we're going to build here. And uh, for the next few minutes, we're going to add these buttons and the controls. So we have one, two, three, four, five buttons. We have a label, we have a text box, and then we have a list box. So that's what we'll make first. So let's go ahead and start a project from scratch. And I'm going to choose a Windows Forms app and choose Next. And we'll call it My Friends List. All right, so here's the app. Let's go ahead and name the app first of all. So down in the properties for the form, let's choose this thing and we'll call it My Friends. So now we have a title on our form. Let's go back and choose list box and add a pretty good amount of space here on the left side. So I'll add two more controls to get started here. We'll put in a text box and then we'll add a button. So the text box uh, should have a certain width uh, and then the text box will change his uh, button text to be uh, add friend. And then I'm going to name the button itself as btn underscore add friend. I'm also going to add a name for our text box. So instead of name text box one, let's put in here txt and we'll call it new friend. Now I'm going to build this iteratively. So we'll start by adding a new feature right now to the uh, button here called add friend. So let's double click in the uh, text and we can add something right away but we're gonna change this code as we go through the program. So the first piece of code that we're going to add is for the button click on the add friend button. Now we're going to make this uh, real simple. We're gonna have one line of code. We're just gonna say listbox1.items.add and we want to get the text that's currently in the new friend text box. So this will be the minimum application and it should work, but not quite to the full features we want. So I'll run the program and let's see, I'll move the uh, window over here and let's put somebody in here. So I'm gonna put in Nathan as a friend and choose add. Looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and add somebody else. Let's add Bob and we add him and there he is. Now you can't, we don't see any sorting yet. So we have some extra programming to do, but you can see that a list box is simply a list of strings. Let's put in Jim. And if I just choose add a bunch of times, I get lots of Jim's. So that's the starting point. Now let's make it a little bit more sophisticated. Now I want to be able to sort this list. So to be able to sort this, I need to do something with lists themselves. So I'm going to add a new variable. So right at the beginning of form one, I'm going to add a new list definition. So a list is a piece of memory that shows a list of strings. As you can see, I'm using string as the list type. Now, my friends is a good name for my list, so I'll create a new list of type string. Now, I'm going to use that list down in the uh, button click. So let's erase the code that we had earlier. And so now I'm going to try to add someone to my friends list here. So just like I was adding to the list box, I can add a string to this list of my friends. So it's simple, my friends .add, and then I take the uh, text value of the text box called new friend. So now a new line after I add a new friend to the list, I'm going to assign the data source for my list box to be my friends. So this is an intermediate step. We're taking a list and then we're assigning it to the list box as its data source. This might have some problems, but you'll see that the idea is very similar to what we did earlier. Let's run it and see if it works. All right, I got the app up and running. I'm gonna put somebody in like Bob and it appears that my program's working. But now I'm gonna add somebody else. Let's put in uh, Donna and let's see what happens. And we've got nothing, doesn't seem to work. 
Uh, is this uh, because the list isn't working or is it because the data source isn't working? Not quite sure, but let's go ahead and see if we can fix this problem. To show how many people are in the list, I'm going to add a label to my controls and label one is what his name is. So let's go back into my friends and now I'm gonna add some new information to the program. So what I want to do is provide some feedback to the user. So I'm going to have label one dot text to be equal to a message. Let's say that it is going to tell, count the people in the list. So there are my friends dot count people in the list. So that's all one string. So that should show up on the label. Okay, let's go ahead and run the program and see if we get some more information. Okay, I got the program running. So let's put in somebody. Let's put in Vicky and let's choose there. And it says there are one people in the list. Let's see, make it a little wider. Let's put in this one. Let's try Steve and let's see what happens there. It says there are two people in the list. How come my list is only showing Vicky? If I choose Steve and add, 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 you can see that I get a lot of people on the list, but the list is not updating. So we're missing some steps here in between. Let's fix that. So what's missing is an item called a binding source. So a binding source is a intermediate link between a list and a list box. So we're just going to define a new binding source and I'll just name it BS. Now in the uh, form constructor here, I'm going to give BS a, a value. So let's do BS dot data source. And I'm going to have him become my friends. So we have an intermediate binding source variable that has a data source. Now when we come down to data source for my, uh, my list box, I can say equals BS. So now I'm going to add a key line here that will change everything. Let's go to BS dot and I'm going to choose the word reset bindings and then it needs a parentheses and that is a command that will tell the list box to update using the current version of our friends list. Now there's missing something here. You can see that there is a red line and it needs a parameter I believe. So let's hover and what does it say? It says we have a uh, parameter called metadata changed. It's a boolean. A boolean is a true or a false value. So if the data type changed from string to integer, for example, then it would have to have the word true. However, we are not changing from the string type to anything else. So I'm going to put in false here. So that means that we are constantly using strings in the update. So I don't have to worry about reformatting anything. The names are still names. Let's see if that works better. Let's put in Charlie for a name. And let's put in a new name here. Let's call uh, Lola. And you can see now we have Charlie and Lola. And it looks like I'm getting what I want. So let's go to Howard for the third guy. And now we have three people. So it looks like the binding source was our key that we needed to add. Now let's go on and add some sorting. So maybe we'll stop here, but we'll add the sorting of the ability to sort in forward direction and in reverse direction. That's coming up right.